to record. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, to be honest, I had actually, uh, I actually wanted to uh, talk about at least uh, three or four temples, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't had the time to prepare much in detail. But I have one uh, very beautiful, one very rare uh, temple of uh, Sri Krishna in Kerala that I would like to talk about. Uh, brief though it may be, uh, I hope uh, uh, virtually at least uh, in our minds and in our hearts we are able to visit this very beautiful temple. Thank you. That's good. Uh, just one minute. Okay, I will share the screen. I would like to start with a very beautiful prayer from Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, this section is especially, I am sure the devotees must be familiar with uh, this part of the Bhagavatam. It occurs in chapter 31 of the 10th canto. And this collection, this, this set of verses is known as the Gopika Gitam. Uh, we actually prayers. just uh, chanted those um, really? this week. Thursday. Yeah. On Thursday, yeah. And <laughs> in fact, uh, Karuna, who's on the court, as always, yeah. she chants <laughs> this so well. So it'd be great to hear <laughs> you as well. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so I've just picked the first of these, I think it's 19 verses. Yes. Yes, that's yeah. right. 19 verses, chapter 31 of the 10th canto. So I've just picked the first one. And fortunately, I was able to find this very beautiful picture. <laughs> And that, that shows Krishna surrounded <laughs> by the <body>. Yes. <laughs> we usually see pictures of uh, Krishna uh, doing uh, the Rasa Leela, uh, enacting the Rasa Leela with the gopis. But uh, this was very rare. I, have, I hadn't seen such a picture before. So thankfully, I was able to find it today. OK. Uh, so I um, these prayers. Uh, I have listened to my mother and my aunt uh, chant these uh, prayers in a, in, in a very beautiful uh, tune, in a very beautiful uh, melody. And after, uh, after every two or uh, three words, uh, we insert the word Krishna uh, in between. So although the word Krishna is not specifically part of the verse itself. Uh, while singing it, we uh, add the word Krishna in between. Uh, and it sound, it, it's very nice. I, I like it very much. So I'll sing this uh, one verse, offer this one verse to the Lord. Jayati te dikam Krishna janmana vraja Shrayata Indira Krishna Shashwadatrahi Daita Drishyatam Krishna Dikshuta Vakas Tvaidhrita Savas Krishna Tvam Vichinvate O oh dear Krishna, your birth in the sacred Rajabhumi has made it exceedingly glorious and therefore Indira or Devi Mahalakshmi the goddess of prosperity and fortune permanently resides here. We, your devoted servants, maintain our lives only for your sake. We have been looking for you everywhere, dear Krishna. So please show yourself to us. Uh, next, uh, I have a very short prayer to Sri Krishna as Santana Gopala or the protector of children. So 
I recall reading this particular verse as part of a much uh, longer uh, prayer for the Santana Gopala Stotram. And uh, this is one of the verses. I don't know if it's the first verse or if it occurs in somewhere in between, but it is part of a prayer called the Santana Gopala Stotram. It's a collection of verses and this is just one of them. Om Shri Devaki Sutta Govinda Vasudeva Jagatpade Dehi Me Tanayam Krishna Vamaham Sharanam Rataha O Son of Devaki, O Govinda, O Vasudeva, the Lord of the Universe, please be so kind as to bless me with a good child, O Krishna. I surrender myself to you. So this picture, it, it's very rare to find a picture or a deity of Lord Vishnu in this particular form. If you see, he is holding the Shankha and the Chakra in his two upper hands, but in his two lower hands, you can see he's holding a baby. He's holding a little child in two of his lower hands. So this picture is a pictorial representation. It's a painting of the presiding deity at the temple that I would like to briefly mention today. So the presiding deity at the temple is, looks exactly like this. Uh, but of course, uh, actual photographs of the deity cannot be taken. So this is an artist's impression. This is a painting of uh, what the deity looks like inside the temple. So this is um, a temple called the Puravad Sri Vaikuntheshwara Santana Gopala Swami Temple. It is located about two and a half kilometers away from a major city in Kerala called Changanasheri. I think somewhere in the region of Alipi was famous for its backwaters. It's a centuries old temple which was revived and re-established by the royal family of Tiruvannantapuram sometime I believe in the 16th or the 17th or the late 17th or mid 18th century. I'm not sure about the time period. The presiding deity is of course Lord Mahavishnu who holds as we saw in the picture in the previous slide, a shankha and a chakra, and he's also holding a baby in two of his hands. The deity sankalpa, or the conception of the deity. The deity sankalpa in every temple is different. In some temples, he is worshipped as little Krishna. In some temples, he is worshipped as a cowherd who is playing the flute and uh, herding the cattle. In some temples, he is worshipped along with Radha as the Lord of Radha. Or in other temples, he is worshipped along with Devi Rukmini or Rukmini and Satya Bhama. And in other temples, he is worshipped in his four-armed form as Mahavishnu. So different conceptions, different sankalpas of the deity in different temples. Here, it is that of Lord Mahavishnu as Santana Gopala. Santana meaning children. He who blesses devotees with the gift of children and protects them. Couples who are blessed with children after undertaking the Santana Gopala Vratam and praying to the deity here, they return to symbolically offer their children at the Lord's feet here as a gesture of thanksgiving to the Lord. And because of that, Every child here becomes an embodiment of Sri Krishna and every such blessed mother becomes an embodiment of Mata Yashoda. Uh, to, uh, so in connection with uh, this form of the Lord as Santana Gopala, I know I have recounted this uh, episode from the Srimad Bhagavatam many times. Uh, last week, uh, we uh, briefly spoke about, um, you know, when we had this virtual version of different 
uh, deities, different temples across Bharat as part of our Shri Krishna Janmashtami session. We briefly touched upon, uh, we revisited the temple of uh, Lord Vishnu again as Santana Gopala uh, in a place called uh, Tripunipura in Kerala. Uh, let me uh, just go back and look for a picture of that deity. Um, Here we go. So uh, the devotees may recall seeing uh, a picture of this deity when we discussed the Purnatraisha temple or the Santana Gopala Swami temple in Kerala, Tripunitra. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yeah. So the the deity, uh, the conception of the Lord as Santana Gopada links these two temples. Um, so I'll briefly uh, recount that episode for uh, the benefit of the devotees and to refresh our uh, memories. So in Dwaraka, where Sri Krishna ruled as the king, there lived a, a Brahmin who unfortunately, very unfortunately, lost nine of his children successively, one after the other. They did not actually uh, die, but they mysteriously disappeared into nothingness. They, they disappeared right in front of his eyes and uh, the most confusing thing was the neither the brahman nor his wife could give any rational or logical explanation as to where the children were disappearing to and this happened not once not twice but nine times successively and the brahman was so frustrated that uh, eventually he could hold it in no longer, and he made his way to Sri Krishna's palace. And there, in front of a full assembly, he began to vent his frustration. He said, you, O Sri Krishna, you who are the king of Dwaraka, as a king, uh, you have the responsibility to protect your subjects. And here, right under your nose, nine of my children have disappeared as soon as they have been born. I have lost nine of my children, my wife, and I cannot take this loss anymore. We yearned for a child for so long. And as soon as each of our children were born, they were taken away. We don't know how. And I could see no other way out of this other than to approach you. Uh, how can this happen in a kingdom where you are the king? And the Brahmin went on and on and on. And Arjuna, who was present in the palace at that time, he could not uh, take this because he, he, he couldn't tolerate anybody talking about Shri Krishna in uh, any inferior manner. He could not tolerate anyone disrespecting the Lord. And although the Brahmin did not actually mean to offend the Lord or disrespect the Lord, the manner in which the Brahmin met in his frustration uh, made Arjuna think otherwise. And then he stood up and said, Oh Brahmin, how can you speak to the Lord like this? I here, I as a representative of uh, Shri Krishna, I pledge right now, I make a pledge, I make a vow that I will protect your next child. Uh, and as soon as it's born, I shall ensure that it does not get taken away. I shall ensure that it does not disappear like your other children have done. And I also pledge that if I fail to do so, I shall give up my own life. And so it happened that uh, Arjuna went to the Brahmin's house uh, in this 
Dwaraka city and using all his uh, knowledge of uh, Astra Vidya or the knowledge of weapons, divine weapons, he invoked every protect, every uh, weapon, every mantra that he knew of and constructed a protective armor, a protective shield around the Brahmin's house. And he was so confident that uh, he, he, he was 100 percent sure, 100 to 200 percent sure that there was nothing that could uh, take the child away when he was there, when his protective shield was around the house. And then they waited. Uh, eventually, the 10th child was also born. But in spite of all the protection that Arjuna had put in place, and the child disappeared through the roof of the house, right in front of their eyes, they, they actually saw it happening. And they could do nothing to stop it, not even Arjuna. And he was dumbfounded. He thought, what have I done? I gave my word to this Brahmin. I promised him that I would protect his 10th child. And here, right in front of my eyes, even that 10th child has disappeared. And uh, Arjuna was a man of his word. He had to keep true to his pledge. He had given his word to the Brahmin. And now he had to fulfill his pledge. So what he did was to construct a fire out of his uh, um, yogic uh, powers uh, and his knowledge of weaponry. And then he was just about to step into the fire to give up his own life when Sri Krishna grabbed his hand. He stopped Arjuna. And what do you think you are about to do? Uh, do you think it's right to... Uh, take your own life like that. You do not have the right to do that. Uh, it's a sin that it's a very, very grave sin that you're about to commit. Uh, I cannot let you do that. And I promise I shall come, I shall take you and we together, we shall bring back every single child of the Brahmin alive. We shall search every spot in the universe. We shall not rest until we have done that. Uh, so come along with me. And so Krishna and Arjuna, they sat in Krishna's divine chariot and they took off. And now Krishna's chariot, it was no ordinary chariot. So they went higher and higher and higher. They crossed the boundaries of the material universe. Now no ordinary vehicle can do that. But this was Krishna's chariot. This was not any ordinary vehicle. So they went higher and higher and higher. They crossed uh, boundaries of the material universe. They came to the boundary uh, that separates the material universe from the spiritual universe. And then they entered, finally, they entered the region of the Milky Ocean, where they had the most divine, the most beautiful vision of Lord Mahavishnu lying on the coiled body of the divine snake Ananta, or Adi Sesha. It was glorious. Arjuna was so thrilled he could not speak. And he bowed down very reverently, praying to the Lord with full submission. And wonder of wonders, he saw not only the Lord, but every single child of the Brahmin sitting around the Lord and playing as if nothing had happened. Every single child was alive. And before they reached, uh, there was one point I missed. Before they reached uh, Vaikuntha, before they reached uh, the Milky Ocean where the Lord resides, they also had made a stop uh, in Yamaloka, the abode of uh, Yamaraja, who is uh, the god of death. And uh, assuming that the children had, read, of course, Krishna knows everything, but he has to put Arjuna, he had to put Arjuna through the test. He had to make Arjuna understand. So they went to Yamaloka where uh, Yamaraja, he informed them uh, that he did not have any of the Brahmin's children. He said, I have not taken any of the Brahmin's children. The children uh, must most definitely be alive because if they had really passed from the material world as living beings usually do, then they would have been with me. But no, I have not taken them. 
and that is how they left Yamaloka. They went on and on and on, and finally they reached uh, the abode of the Supreme Lord Mahavishnu. And there they saw all of the Brahmins' children playing happily, uh, as if nothing had happened at all. And the Lord then handed over uh, all of the children to Arjuna. And along with the children, he also handed over this very beautiful uh, deity whose picture we see on the screen now. And he instructed Arjuna to install this deity at an appropriate spot on the earth. And that is how the temple of Sri Krishna as Santana Gopala or Purnatresha came into being at the place which is known as Tripunitura today near the city of Kochi or Kochin or Ernakulam as it is also known in Kerala. So in connection with this very same episode of Santana Gopalam from the Srimad Bhagavatam. The deity conception at uh, the temple that we just saw, the Puravad Sri Vaikundeshwaram Sri Santana Gopala Swami temple. So the conception of the deity is connected, it's linked to this episode and uh, Conceptually, it is also linked to that uh, temple of Purnatresha at uh, Tripunitra. So this, therefore, is uh, leads to this very beautiful, very rare form of uh, Krishna, or uh, in his form as Mahavishnu, holding a child in his hands uh, in a gesture of blessing. So that's all I have for today. Uh, I really, I really wanted to. Uh, include a few more uh, temples I would have loved to but I did not have the time but I promise to come back uh, next time whenever I uh, we have a session I will make sure I include uh, more uh, temples to talk about there are, there are so many I, I uh, fingers are not enough there are so many such beautiful temples to talk about but for today this is all Hare Krishna. thank you no thank you so much it's really good um, you know the other Shruti, um, yeah. th that that family is all going back to Bharat to serve their parents. Oh, uh, you mean uh, the little girl Shruti? Yeah, Shruti has. that's right. Oh, that's it. Okay. And they live in Srirangam in the compound. Yes. Near, yeah. near the compound. I remember Shruti really mentioning that to me. I think. Yeah, yeah she mentioned she lives in uh, the city of uh, Trichy. Yeah. Yes. That's right. So um, they've uh, it's it's you know they're going back to that place. So it's going to be very interesting, oh, uh, and she can also um, eventually do some presentations, you know, for us where, because she's going to be living there. It's going to be very interesting. That's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Of course, as uh, a local resident, she'll have so much more to share with us. It would be yeah. wonderful to hear all that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions? Anybody got any questions? Any comments? Thank you, Shruti, our usual amazing temple. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As yeah. always, sweet and really well executed. Lovely. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, 